Welcome back data leaders and big data learners to the series of video where we are building our own big data warehouse cluster. We have completed the first two steps where we downloaded the executables and then we did the HDFS and YARN installation. We also ensured that the Java runtime etc is also there. If if all this step is completed, then only you should start this video. Okay. Now we are going to start the high installation. Okay. So let us dive into the terminal directly, and this is also going to follow. We are going to follow the the uh, EMR instance practice. EC EMR EC2 sorry EC2 EMR files BYOB deployed at SH. However, we are going to use a more command right now because we have to do something else. Okay. Last time we came to here, correct? And then you see that the other steps that I executed, you saw that most important thing is that once you uh, do the LSLTR Hadoop DFS location, this is the file system location. Okay. And you see that if you do the find on this, okay, let us do the find on this. Let us see what we get. If I do a find opt, these are the nodes that I have taken and I am sharing it with you guys. So, so you'll see that inside the find there are name, secondary name, primary, the data node, etc. Everything is inside that. And you'll see that this is one of the nodes under which the Hadoop file system keeps all the files. If you ask me, this is actually the structure, the data warehouse structure. Okay. So this is uh, this is not something that we need to understand at the beginning level. Okay. But as you go into more detail and you learn more about data warehouses, at the time you will sure come across these points, these uh, files. But this is primarily in the Hadoop area. So if you are not working at the very low level of files, I, am, I don't think even you will have to worry about these things. But I am just showing you what are the uh, things available. Okay. So let us do the more again. And uh, in order to, if you want to check the uh, Hadoop file system is working or not, you can do the checking. Okay. By using this. Uh, using the start dfs dot sh that i did in the last uh, step and you can actually do a hdfs dfs ls and you can do a net dr so what you'll do is we will do this right now okay before we go into high we have to complete this and also one more thing uh, i will actually complete that so if i do jps right now you'll see that none of the nodes are working so i'm going to say start dfs dot sh that will start the uh, uh, DFS file and always start the DFS file and start the yarn. Do not do the other way. And when you stop, you should stop yarn first and then you need to start DFS. Okay. The, without, if you do the other way, then the uh, systems will get corrupted. Keep this in mind. Start DFS, start yarn. Stop yarn, start, stop DFS. Okay. This is the format you need to follow. Okay. Keep this in your mind. Uh, keep repeating. Because this is your data warehouse, so be responsible. Now, what we are going to do is we are going to do uh, we are going to first of all check JPS, and we see that all the nodes are up. And what we are going to do is we are going to run this command: HDFS DFS ls. Uh, is it right? Yeah, we have to use hyphen because ls is still list. Okay, but we have to still use hyphen for the HDFS DFS command to know. You see that under the root, I have nothing available. Okay, so next command, I can actually make directory and uh, and I can actually create the directory under user. Okay, so what I'm going to do is HDFS DFS uh, make directory also, we need to have the hyphen. So we cannot, this is actually not Linux, right? This is actually cluster commands that we are using. And the this piece which will uh, automatically create the folders that is not available. So uh, in, okay, so the folder here, it will be your username. So, okay, so now once I do that, it will take some time. Okay, then it gets executed. Then now if I do an LS, 
you see this this is what i was talking about now the hdfs dfs file system is up and running and we have used and you see that uh, if i say user you see that inside the user we have Ubuntu. there is no files these are all just folders that has been created okay this is just directories that has been created so this is how the hdfs file system gets started okay now we know that hdfs is up and running ensure as i was again telling you if you are going to shut down the server you should stop first yarn you have to stop yarn.sh and then only you have, you have to stop dfs.sh do not do the other way it will corrupt and also do not shut down the server without actually stopping this uh, these uh, name node and uh, resource negotiator again that will also corrupt this i uh, this i am repeating routinely because i have corrupted one of my clusters uh, quite some time back and i don't want you guys to face the same charge okay now we know that bfs is there uh, it is working and uh, we have to still see how to use it but before that we can actually we are right now going to start working on high okay so we have we have done till now you can start and stop it you can check it okay now what we are going to do is we are going to work on apache high this is the step that we are going to start okay the same for format we will follow so we will first uh, extract it then uh, we will not remove it we will then move the uh, apache folder to opt then we will create uh, we will own the folder and then we will create a uh, link uh, soft link for the high so what we will do is we will just copy this okay because this uh, particular file uh, okay so we will not be able to execute uh, i think we can yeah we can execute but it will go up so tar xzf so if you see xzf and apache no, apache is already there you have to just execute this so it will extract it and next what you are going to do is you are going to move the folder move the entire apache uh, this particular folder that gets created so we say sudo move f uh, we are going to move it to opt so apache so it is already there apache uh, wait a minute yeah it is there and we are going to move it to opt it will move it and then we are going to own the folder sudo ch own uh, ch own dollar user colon dollar user you see that as i am typing i am also talking to myself the purpose is not just to tell to you what is going on but also to ensure that i am not making mistakes when you talk when you when you exactly uh, repeat what you are going to type 99.9 percent .9 of the time it works without any issue so you don't make any mistakes and then you say sudo ln s so i'm going to create the link here for op apache hive and i am going to create it under op hive okay so that would have created it and next what i am going to do is i am going to copy so again you you remember for last time we did it for uh, hadoop file system the same way there is a configuration for hive also so what we are going to do we are just going to copy that from the cluster config to op hive config all this uh, configuration files we have to manually edit it but since the config and also you need to understand these things right not everybody will understand what is going on and that is uh, one of the reasons why uh, you know people are considering that this uh, big data warehouse creation etc is very tough but once you start understanding what is going on that time it becomes easy and then we are going to copy it to conf and then it gets copied and okay so now actually that that is where we have to stop okay what happens now is that we have to also copy the jar file this particular jar file that is available here we need to copy that also this purpose of the jar file is going to help us connect with the uh, connect with the postgres uh, database so where is the jar file so this jar file is here this jre.jar file is already available here it's not a tar file it's a jar file you have to directly copy it okay don't uh, uh, don't do any untarring and all just you have to directly copy it 
Okay, and here, here I have actually, you have to remove, so there is already one guava 19.0 uh, jar pipe, remove that from the height. So, that is also important. So, remove, opt, height. So, if you see that, I am actually tabbing, uh, pressing the tab by just giving one, uh, uh, one letter. So, you see that it actually gets populated. You see this file, I did not type it, it, it was already there. I am just going to execute that and I am going to copy the guava dot jar. So, okay, I am going to copy that to hive.lib. So, this is what I am going to do. And uh, see, the point here is that uh, we need to copy it into the right location or else it will create the problem. The, uh, the Goa 27.0.jr file that we downloaded, that is also coming with the Hadoop uh, system also. You can use that also. So, both are okay. Uh, but I will be using the Hadoop one. Okay. So, use the Hadoop one only to avoid any confusion. Okay. That is done. And now, ensure that your Docker, so this is what I was telling you, right? Ensure that your Docker is set up and up and running, then only you can go to the next step. This step is one of the most challenging step that uh, we have to execute. Once this step is executed, then rest of the things are very easy, okay? So let us uh, go to the next step where we actually have to, just a minute, it is going to take a little time. Yeah, this is the file. Okay, so you are here connecting with the database, right? So we are done till now here. And now the next step is we are going to say schema tool db type postgres and we are going to say init schema. This particular step that whichever we are going to execute will uh, decide whether our uh, server uh, the uh, the entire uh, process that we have done till now the high installation everything has been done properly or not. So before executing this, ensure that you exit out and then uh, enter back. Exit out of the SSH and then enter back. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to exit out of this uh, SSH connection and I'm going to reconnect again. So that if there is any environmental variables that needs to be uh, updated for high, it will get updated. So always do that so to avoid any kind of confusion. So now we are going to execute the uh, sorry. We are going to execute this command. Okay. So we are going to say schema schema tool db type Also, uh, one more important thing, before you execute that, ensure that your uh, nodes are running. Okay, all these nodes should be running, uh, or else also this, this can fail. Okay. Okay, so something is happening here, you saw that, and then you saw the help coming. So this entire process is actually, you know, connecting with the jar files. You see this connecting connection happening. Okay. It is actually doing that. And it is, it is giving the various options that is available. If, if this particular uh, command does not execute from your home directory, that means your environmental variable is not set. So you need to set the environment variable. You have made some mistake already in the process. Okay. So till now the process is going on as per the plan. So let us now execute the next step. So I am going to use grep command to actually show the command that you are going to follow. So you see that schema tool. Schema tool db db type Postgres init schema. We are going to initialize the schema. Okay, if, the, if the everything has been set properly, then it will work. Okay, but in my case, the setting is not proper. Okay, and you see that why the setting is not proper. 
first of all if you take a look at the uh, the setting that has been made uh, uh, is wrong so we will actually correct it right now based on the uh, debugging that i had done when i was installing it i have either made the mistake somewhere in this process in the hive site dot configuration file so right now i am checking that and i will be reverting back in the next video so till this uh, installation of hive process do complete it and uh, then in the next video we will work on updating this uh, uh, updating the schema tool and connecting hive with the uh, hive meta store uh, in the postgresql uh, database so till then guys uh, let us uh, go to the presentation again uh, so we have we have to yet to complete the hive installation so we will complete it in the, the next step and then we will also complete spark installation in the next uh, video see uh, till then uh, see you uh, see you uh, practicing and once you practice ensure that uh, all the steps are complete till the schema tool creation and uh, till then guys have a great time